Tom and I know each other for a uh, long while. The first time I got to collaborate with him was when he conducted Stravinsky's Lenos um, in Birmingham and then I was one of the pianists. We were friends for quite a while and then um, I was playing his piece, the one, in fact, that we played here for his 50th birthday, which is In Seven Days, which is the earlier piece for piano and orchestra. And that was in Boston in 2012. And then Tom uh, and I had a conversation. I said, could you write a piece for me one day? And I didn't dream that it would be a piano concerto. But in fact, in that moment, he said, well, could it be, uh, does it have to be a solo piece? Or could it be... Um, a piece for piano and orchestra, and I said, well, look, you're, you're the incredible composer. It's going to be whatever you say it's going to be. And uh, he said, well, I think I'd like to write a proper piano concerto, as if In Seven Days isn't. And I know what he means, because In Seven Days is, let's say, a symphonic piece with a huge piano obbligato part. And the piano concerto that Tom wrote is, I would say, very much an understatement, a proper piano concerto. I think for me it's a concerto in this uh, uh, great lineage of uh, concerti by Prokofiev, Rachmaninoff, Ravel, and uh, one of, certainly it is one of the most important concertos in the last uh, 50, 60 years written for a piano. And it's become sort of um, an instant modern classic. Uh, Despite the pandemic happening soon after its premiere in 2019, it's been a piece that, uh, that I've played now, I think, over 50 times. And um, as with much of Tom's music, it has his um, very original uh, and recognizable uh, language of Thomas Addis's compositions. And at the same time, I think the listener is not uh, disoriented because, the, because Tom pays homage to uh, many traditions of the piano concerto. It has a brilliant finale with a slow episode in the third movement, uh, similar to, let's say, some uh, pieces by Prokofiev. It has a lyrical, deep, and somewhat tragic uh, second movement. It has a first movement that is quite brilliant um, and has a big virtuosic piano cadenza. So I think uh, musicians uh, in the orchestra and listeners um, can orient themselves within this tradition and yet it's not derivative and always through a very original prism that refers to music past and points to music future. So, um, so it's a piece that I'm very fond of and uh, very much look forward to, to playing together with the musicians of the LSO, with uh, Sir Antonio Papano and uh, for, the, for, for the London Symphony Orchestra audience here in London. Mm -hmm.